Hey everyone, it's Unit 2, Segment 3, Video Notes. Um, so far we've covered energy, the three main sources for our planet, and how energy is converted from one form to another from those three main sources. We've talked about the laws of thermodynamics, and finally we talked about the difference between renewable and non-renewable, and began talking about non-renewable energy resources. So with segment three, we actually start talking about renewable energy resources. There are many, many options in this regard. They're also called alternative energy resources. And in general, they have benefits like, because it's renewable, we will never run out. Um, there are overall, there's overall less air pollutants that are emitted and less greenhouse gases that are emitted. Countries are less dependent on other nations for fuel, so they don't have to um, import anything. It could possibly create jobs because right now the infrastructure is not necessarily in place. Um, Technology is not designed yet. Uh, so jobs would be available to design, build, and then maintain the new technology that comes about. And a little diagram kind of gives you a little insight into what kinds of renewables are out there. The first one we'll talk about is biomass and there are so many different aspects of this but biomass is defined as material that makes up living organisms or comes from organisms. So examples would be like wood, wastes like manure, and, and grain. Biomass energy is energy that's produced from the material, from the biomass. Fossil fuels though are not included here and biomass is primarily used for cooking, heating, and powering motor vehicles and generating electricity. And you can see in the diagram there is a few um, different kinds of items that would go into what we call biomass. Biofuels as a term is liquid fuels from biomass sources. So ethanol and biodiesel are two examples. Ethanol is produced by fermentation of starches and sugars, so this is without oxygen available, and, and it's used by itself, or it can be mixed with gasoline to power call, um, cars, and that would be called gasohol. So you have gasoline mixed with alcohol. In the U.S., the ethanol mostly comes from corn, which is renewable and seasonal, and then the gasohol is, like I mentioned before, is a blend of gasoline and alcohol and it produces much less um, carbon monoxide and particulate matter than the regular gasoline. Right now our, our normal gasoline is about 85 percent gasoline and 15 percent alcohol, but the E85 you might have heard of is the flip-flop, so it's 85 percent alcohol and 15 percent gasoline. Okay, biodiesel um, is just a different kind of fuel. It's produced from vegetable oil and vegetables like corn and such, those are renewable. It's usually mixed with the conventional petroleum-based diesel. So it's a almost like a gasohol, only this is diesel. And it cuts down emissions um, compared to regular diesel. There's a lot of new incoming information about this kind of these kinds of fuels, so it's really going to be interesting to see what the future brings. Biopower is electricity that's generated by burning biomass. So we have, you know, what can we burn that's got the carbon hydrogen bonds that we can break? So waste from existing industries and processes can go back in and get burned, and then um, we can turn water into steam, steam turns a turbine, and we can do it that way. So things like sawdust, corn stalks, husks, biomass waste from landfills, things that we um, wouldn't normally even have a purpose for now can be burned to provide um, electricity. I went up to the UP and visited several paper mills and lumber um, manufacturing and they actually do a really good job of using their waste materials to generate electricity for them. They have very little waste material that comes out of that um, those industries because they use it. <laughs> they burn it. Anyhow, crops that are mainly used for this are fast-growing trees and of course the grass is like switchgrass. Methane comes out of the fermentation process so that's without oxygen. 
of biomass. And so landfills, you'll often, if you drive down I-94 or down the high, any of the highways or whatever, you'll see, you'll come across these big hills that have these pipes coming out of them. And those are landfills and that's venting the methane that's building up from the fermenting um, garbage. And because oxygen is not available down in the deep layers, they vent that to also pro provide oxygen and also to vent that methane. But now we're getting smart about things and we are taking what's venting out of there, that methane, and we're able to combust that, turn water to steam, steam turns to turbine, we're able to generate the electricity that way. So we're actually being able to make electricity from this waste material. It's called biopower and it's pretty awesome. The combustion of the methane and biomass turns water to steam, steam turns a turbine, turbine gen turns a generator, generate and generates electricity. We know it's not very efficient because of all those energy transfers that have to happen along the way, but it's still methane, which is a greenhouse gas, is not going out into the atmosphere that at that point, and it's being used to provide electricity. So we're finding a little bit more use to our waste products. Um, the pros for using any of the biomass um, items, the carbon that is produced equals the carbon that is removed from the atmosphere. So even though we are burning, for, say, for example, wood, you're releasing the carbon, but the carbon was pulled out to make the wood when you, re when you plant more trees to, to cut more down. See what I'm saying? So it's actually considered a no net carbon dioxide release. It's young carbon. The turnover is fast, if you think about it like that, compared to a fossil fuel that is millions of years old with carbon. That thing's been stashed for millions of years. But with biomass, it's so new, it's been so fresh out of the atmosphere and is being put back in that the turnover rate, it's considered no net CO2 release. The economical benefits, um, well, we wouldn't have to depend on the fossil fuels anymore. So that could boost the economy in that regard. And the, another big perk is that biomass, the plants themselves are distributed worldwide easy access. But the pro the drawbacks would be that we do, um, we would be competing with land, like, um, excuse me, the biofuel crops, the biofuel crops would actually compete with the crop, food crops for farmers. And so both require a, a vast amount of land in order to grow that and, and harvest it. And so there's going to be competition there. Woods not sustainably harvested. Um, Wood that is not sustainably harvested risks deforestation, which we know uh, soil erosion and desertification is a major issue when we consider that. We know indoor wood burning actually has a lot of indoor pollutants, so you want to make sure that there's good ventilation because the respiratory system can have problems such as cancer and infections. And we know that burning biomass to heat up water to turn to steam is actually not a very efficient um, way of producing electricity. But not only that, the input amount of energy that goes into growing corn to then harvest and then create the ethanol is a lot. So, but it's also a lot for the um, fossil fuels as well. So none of these are very efficient at this point that we've talked about. Uh, geothermal, I'm going to try to squeeze this in on the same video, but geothermal we talked about as one of the main energy sources for our planet. Geo means earth, thermal means heat, so heat beneath the earth's surface is what geothermal energy is. Some locations on our planet actually are closer, the surface is closer to the magma. The magma, I should say, is closer to the surface, so therefore any of the groundwater gets nice and hot. And so hot groundwater can be used directly in for heating. Um, you can pipe that into your home and run that through, you know, even if you ran it through your hot water heater or even along the, the floorboards, you, you can get some very nice heating that way. It's primarily used for heating and cooling. The pumps and the pipes beneath the buildings pick up energy or release energy. You don't have to be located near magma in order to benefit from geothermal. Below the surface is a constant temperature. So it's warmer than the air in the winter, and it's cooler than the air in the summer. So therefore, you can benefit by pumping water down in in the um, winter to warm up the water so your hot water heater doesn't have to work as hard. And it can also be used for generating electricity if you consider a geyser down in the corner. There's a picture of one. That is 
kinetic energy right there that can turn a turbine that can be connected to a generator and we can get some electricity from it. I, I don't know how curious you are about geothermal, but um, my house at home has geothermal energy. It's more like, let's see if I can move this mouse here, it's more like, um, actually I think ours is, is a open loop because it's connected to a lake that we live on. So we can pull in um, some heat or, or we can lose heat in that regard. But look at how it's set up. So you have pumps that will pump the water or air, depending, on through. And it can pick up energy in the wintertime, for example, when the ground is warmer than the air. So if you pump it underground, it's going to pick up energy. So that way your, your hot water heater or your heating and cooling doesn't have to work as hard. Go ahead and pause the video and take a look at this and see if you can interpret what these diagrams are showing. We will likely talk about these in class. The pros to using geothermal, um, there are less air pollution, pollutants that are emitted than fossil fuels by far. You do require pumps here, so there is some electricity that's being used. And right now, um, more than half of our electricity comes from coal being burned. So we do have some emissions, but not directly. Those are indirect. There's a lot less greenhouse gas emissions than the fossil fuels emit. You can kind of see here's another. Um, this one here is more geyser-like. I don't want to cross that. Bit. So you have water coming in, steam, turning the turbine, connected to a generator, and generating electricity. But the cons for it is that you, if you're going to use it for the warm water you, and where you need to be located next to where magma is close to the surface, that is a little bit of a drawback because it's going to be limiting. Um, it may not be sustainable because if the geothermal power uses the heated water faster than the groundwater can be possibly be replaced, then you're going to run out of water in which to use. Um, geyser water is rich in minerals. It's corrosive. It's expensive to install and maintain. When we bought our house and it already had geothermal, we really got a benefit. It probably was included in our house price, but we really benefited because we didn't put the upfront cost there. It was already there. So otherwise, you do have to eat that upfront cost, but in, in the long run, it, it saves you on your electric bill. I think that's where we stop. That is where we stop. Segment three, dead.